Yeah, motherfucker. Shut up, I'm talking. Shut up, I'm talking. Previously on Shut Up, I'm Talking. <laughs> You're talking about uh, something you did that you were hesitant to uh, discuss? You can just say it was somebody you knew. There was a guy I met a long time ago. We went up to visit this girl where her family lived. The same slut who sent me to jail three, four months later. And we went to a bar. And I used to have this stupid joke. When I ordered a drink at a bar, I would drink it. And then when I would say, yeah, I'd like another one. But this time, put some liquor in it. And the woman kept going, why? Well, I'm putting liquor in it. And I was like, ah, I can't even taste it. Come on, put some liquor in there. She says this joke one too many times. She handed him this tall glass, and it looked like water. I think it was just straight vodka or grain or something. And I downed it, thinking it was water. She said, that's it. You can't have any more. Some fucking hick comes in and starts talking to her. This slut. <laughs> I don't know what exactly was said, but my friend heard the phrase, are you still wearing those same panties? It was just boom. And like somebody set the keg off. This lunatic gets up and just starts ranting and raving and screaming at everyone in the bar. Said he was going to kick the ass of every single one of them. They'd all line up right now. He can't even see his own hand in front of his face. And then she sent me to jail. She sent who to jail? I was, yeah, I was 19. She sent me to jail. How did she send you to jail? How did that happen? Because that was pretty much the end of it. And then 4th of July weekend came around. She was working at the racetrack down at the end of the Coverstone Drive. Because oh, I was working at 7-Eleven. Yeah. And that was the 4th of July weekend where I had a huge party in my house. And I got really, really drunk. This is the time where I was like jumping on top of people's cars. Oh, my goodness. I remember your cousin Mike and Chris and my brother and three or four of his, my brother's friends. They were all trying to get me off the cars because I was denting the, all these roofs of the cars. You had to crush them. Oh, yeah. Because, I, you know, I was the same size I am now. And, you know, I was wearing like big heavy motorcycle boots and shit. And I was jumping up and down and acting like an idiot. With the energy of a teenager. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember they all ganged up on me. And I just said, you know, all right, let's wrestle. And I started throwing them all around the yard. They just needed a Captain Ahab. <laughs> yeah, basically. So anyway, after that, I said, man, I'm getting thirsty because all the booze was gone. I was all hot and sweaty from jumping on cars and wrestling with all these guys because I'm always thinking ahead. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to go to the 7-Eleven because I work there and I'll get in trouble. Smart move. So I'll go across the street and get a soda at the racetrack. Racetrack you know, is a gas station. Want, right. It's a, it's a gas station. So I walked down there. But of course, this is now 1 o'clock in the morning, one thirty in the morning, and I am drunk, and I went to open the door to, to walk in, and of course, it was locked, and my momentum kept me forward, and I busted right through the glass. Wow. I broke the glass of the door. Oops. Right? Yeah, it was an accident. And then she was in there working the overnights. So, so of course, she thought I was there trying to kill her. She's screaming, and I was like, ah, and then she's, I'm calling the cops, I'm calling the, calling the cops. And then I went over, there was this huge wall. I was climbing up to get up the hill to get out, and I fell off the wall and landed in the gravel. That hurt. <laughs> and that that hurt because it was a good six-foot drop. When I start getting up, I see in the parking lot, of course, there's all these cop cars. Got a choice. <laughs> Flee or stay put. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do? I'm getting out of here. I just stood up and walked off. <laughs> they didn't chase me. They didn't see. I don't think they saw me. Sure I think oh, I got up to lived. the top of the hill, and me and Chris were standing there watching down the cops and stuff. I think that's when we got poison ivy real bad, because I had to call out of work. Because we were, you were in the both brambles? working. Yeah, that's what. It was. Thank you. <laughs> Everything has to be gay with you. Because <laughs> we were both working at this office supply place as delivery drivers, and we both called off because we had poison ivy in the eyeballs and shit. The so anyway, eyeballs? I felt bad the next day. Sure. And I went down there and I said, listen, I broke the door last night by accident. Here's my name, my phone number, my address. Please tell me how much it is because I want to pay for the damages. I, I didn't do it on purpose. And the guy behind the counter says, you know, okay. I said, can I talk to the man? Well, the, the manager's not here. Well, come to find out the manager was terrified, was there and wouldn't come out. Because this dumb bitch 
told this story that I was like a rampaging gorilla trying to break through and kill her. And I'm like, ah, I wanted was a soda. All he wanted was so a Pepsi. Said, yeah, that's what I reminded me of. <laughs> Everyone knew me in Coverstone because I worked at a 7-Eleven. I was, you know, I had that blonde streak on the side of my head. Everyone knew who I was. You were the leopard spotted boots guy. Absolutely. Well, that's, at the time, they were tiger striped sneakers. Still just the classy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have the boots until much later. Oh, okay. So I went down there at least two or three times a day for at least three weeks. And then I finally gave up. I said, well, okay, you know, I won't bother you anymore. And I just, and I left. And then a month later after that, I came home one day and there was a little business card jammed in the front door. It was a Manassas cop. And it said, call me immediately or, you know, officer so-and-so. So I called it up and I said, yeah, I got this card on my door. And he starts into this Mr. Tough guy. Where have you been? We have been searching for you for over a month and we are putting out an APB and we're going to pick you up. And I said, hey, dipshit, I've been down there three times a day, giving them my name, address, and number, telling them where I was so I could pay for the door, and I work across the street. You're obviously not looking very hard. Columbo. And I said, listen, asshole, how'd you get the, how'd you find my house to put this card in the door? Well, you just better come down here or we'll come and get you. And I said, what, where, where's the police station? I'll come down there right now. So he tells me where it is, Manassas City. So I drove down to the police station. And I walked in, and they all go, oh, it's 7-Eleven. <laughs> I'm like, hey. They all know who I am because I would give them all free coffee or soda when they came in there. And I would always talk to them, you know. And what, what are you doing? And I said, well, I got this card. And, of course, it's the guy behind the desk. He left the card. Oh, of course, he has a completely different attitude now. He's like, oh, well, we didn't, you know, we didn't know. And I said, like, all right, well. I said, I, I said, I've been down there giving them my name and number because so, I wanted to pay for the door. I said, I broke it by accident. And he says, well, that's not what we were told. And I said, I got a little drunk, which is probably what I should have told him because I was underage in Virginia. And I went down there to get a soda and, and literally walked through the glass door. I didn't realize it was locked and busted the door. It was an accident because I had those steel toe boots. Why did you have steel toe boots? What do you mean? Why would you have steel uh, toe boots? Because they're very useful. When? They were very useful. When you wanted to. When? Situations arose. <laughs> <laughs> where, you, where there was a misunderstanding and it helped clear uh, communication. So that's how you deal with misunderstandings? <laughs> okay, go this on. This is a long time ago. All right, go ahead. They actually, they booked me. I didn't realize what they were doing. They took my fingerprints and took my picture and all that. And they said, okay, well, you, you, know, you, you can go home because we know where you live. And I said, oh, okay. So then I had to go to court. Well, in the meantime, after this happened, she went back to West Virginia where she lived was a good six hour drive. Wow. Minimum. Yeah, it was a long way. I mean, it's in the north of Pittsburgh. I was asking the cops, what's going to happen? He said, you'll probably have to pay a fine, but you'll have to pay for the door. And I said, well, that's fine because that's what I wanted to do anyway. And then I said, well, she went back to West Virginia and he goes, oh, well, then you have nothing to worry about because if she doesn't show up, they'll just throw it out. And this is, these are the cops that are telling, all the cops that are telling me this. And I remember the day of court, I said, well, I'm just going to go in there, pay the fine, and have a day, extra day off and go putz around. And there was nowhere to park, so I went up to the electric company that was up the street from the courthouse mm -hmm. and parked in their two-hour parking, <laughs> <laughs> thinking I'd be in and out. <laughs> Good planning. And I walked down to the, walked down to the uh, courthouse. Well, they're getting ready to go on this, about five minutes till whatever. And I see the cop, and I said, well, what happens if she doesn't show? Oh, they're just going to throw it out. Don't worry about it. And even if she does, you broke a window. It's not a big deal, you know. I'll be out in time to go enjoy the afternoon and do something else, you know. And get my car out of that two-hour parking spot. So, uh, of course, I did the, the worst thing you can do is I started to relax. And I'm thinking, that's about five minutes till, and I'm standing there, and I'm looking out the window, and what do I see? That dumb bitch and her parents. Oh, and the parents. The right. Going to get what fur now. So I'm in there in the courthouse and the guy called my name the judge he said, yes sir i'm here and he goes approached a bunch and i stood up and he had those like reading glasses that are like half size you know what i mean uh -huh. and when i stood up he looked over the glasses at me and i knew right then and there i was screwed he looked up looked at you and went guilty uh-huh that's exactly what it was i knew i was screwed the second he did that and I walked up to the front, and he goes, tell me what happened. And I said, I was, I accidentally broke the door because I was trying to get a soda. 
He goes, well, how do you do that? And then I made the mistake of saying, well, I was kind of drunk. It was July 4th weekend. And he goes, how old are you? And I went, 19. And he goes, is it legal for you to be drinking at the age of 19 in the state of Virginia? And I kind of went, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> he didn't like that. And he goes, then he called her up there. And she comes up there and tells this whole screaming gorilla story. And I was just shocked. And I went, you got to be out of your fucking mind. And that was obviously not the right thing to say. Yeah, they don't like it when you swear. So I was given 90 days for breaking a window. A bit much. And then I'm like, what? You're out of your mind. I was like, this is nuts. I just broke a window. I'm not Al Capone. 120 days. You know? And yeah, he goes, yeah, that's what he said. You want more? And I went, uh, no. <laughs> Take him out of here. So the cops came and they led me out, out of the courtroom into the little hole. So. So how long did it take before your uh, uncle, Paul Ebert, got you out of the situation altogether? Uh, <laughs> well, I started causing trouble in the little cell. I didn't mean to. Sensing a theme here? Well, I'm in shock because all I can think of is I parked in a two-hour parking. They're going to tow off my car. You know, and then, of course, like, they take your belt and your shoestrings and the earrings and the bangles and the necklaces. You know, they take out all. That's a callback to the story about Matt being arrested yeah. in L.A., so go back and listen <laughs> to that one, too. Yeah, they did the same thing. And it's the holding cell off the side of the courtroom because I guess, you, you know, you're going down to the jail because it's all connected. They put this guy in there with me, or he was, in, he was actually in there before me. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm literally, I think I'm, I'm in shock. Now what? And this idiot is climbing around like some kind of spider monkey. He's climbing up on the bench. He's climbing, trying to get up on top of the door jam. And I'm like, hey, man, calm down. You, didn't, you need to stop. I don't know what he said. I don't think he even said anything. He was just climbing all over the place. And I got uh, frustrated. Get frustrated. That's a better <laughs> word. But I got really frustrated because he wouldn't stop. And it was freaking me out. And I'm sitting there. So I kind of threw him down on the, on the <laughs> bench. And I said, do not move from that spot or I'm going to fuck you six ways to Sunday or something nasty. I was going to do something nasty. You should say maybe fuck you up. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I was going to fuck him up. or you know, But I will I use that clip up. for something else later. Well, he, he sat down. He stopped. And then when they came and they got me, they handcuffed me with my hands behind my back. And they take you in the elevator. And they made me stand in the corner with my face in the corner. And they said, hold on, we got two other guys. These two guys get on the elevator, and they're handcuffed with their hands in front of them. And they don't have to face the corner. And they're staring at me like I'm Charles Manson. They look visibly nervous. They come out of the elevator, and I said, well, what happens now? And he goes, you know the drill. we got to go down to the hold." I said, I've never been in jail. This is the first time for me. I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, your dad comes into play in a minute. Hey, now. I saw him, and I saw uh, my stepfather, Bill. He was in there, too. He they was, they he, were both he working there. there, by the way. Yeah, Let's they both worked there, but they I saw them, okay? That's my father them. was uh, the head of security, and Bill was yeah. maintenance. And I saw your dad. He was sitting up behind, like, a big console. Unsurprised to see you. <laughs> no, I don't think he recognized. I didn't say anything to him. I, uh, in the way it is when you get off the elevator at this point, it's a long spiral walk all the way down to the ground floor. Well, as I am walking in the hallways, everybody in there was screaming at me. Hey, Matt, what's up, man? 7-Eleven. Oh, I thought they were going to say fresh fish. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is the one and only high school reunion I've ever been to. Oh, my. It was everyone I knew and hung out with. Everybody I knew from the street, everybody I knew from school, everybody I knew that, used to, that came into the 7-Eleven. Everybody knew who I was, prisoners and guards alike. <laughs> and the cop looked at me and went, yeah, you've never been here before. And I'm like, no, I haven't. I work at the 7-Eleven. You know, I tried to tell me, yeah, bullshit. He didn't believe me. By the time I got down to the bottom floor, I was like, you know, something's got to change. My life is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I go in there and I get processed. And then they throw you in a holding cell and there's about 20 other people in there because they're all getting processed and sent to wherever they need to be. And who do I see in there? The first guy that comes up to me is the maintenance man for the Coverstone Apartments. Hey, man, what's up? And I was like, hey, I said, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing in here? Oh, I had a trunk full of crystal meth and I held the cops off with a shotgun. And, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I'm like, holy crap. He goes, yeah, I might be in here for a while. And I'm like, oh. 
<laughs> and then the next guy was telling his horror stories of attacking some lady with a crowbar, all this shit. And then they come around to me. What'd you do? Oh, I broke a window. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, what? No, you didn't do that. I was like, yeah. I, and, they, and then it was all a big joke. Like, man, they're, they're cracking down. <laughs> <laughs> but come to find out, you know, you'd go in there and you get processed and they make you take that shower. Yeah, they, <laughs> they throw that powder all over you. Delousing powder? Yeah. Check your butthole. All, it's humiliating. Oh, how'd that and then go? They make you, wait, wait, wait. Make you take a shower. Wait, let's go into in-depth on checking your butthole. It's not in-depth. There's nothing in-depth. <laughs> how many fingers? How deep? You're, they throw they throw that powder all over you. Right. And then they say, lift your sack. And you have to lift your sack. And then you say, turn around, bend over. And I'm like, what? Turn around, bend over, and spread your cheeks. And I'm like, holy crap. And you have to show them your butthole, make sure there's nothing in there. And then they say, okay, get a shower. How many times did you finish? Yeah. <laughs> How did you feel showing a grown man your butthole? Uh, it was humiliating. <laughs> it was. It was terrible. Did you make it wink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you make little pucker noises? No, I didn't do any of that. So anyway, they get, after you get a shower, they give you some clothes. All right. They give me, you know, a pair of like gym shorts and a t-shirt, a pair of like a, they look like Gilligan shoes, and then they give you the this jumps. They gave me this yellow jumpsuit, but it was too small. I couldn't zip it, but I had to put this thing on just to keep it sexy. <laughs> I remember the other guys in line; they were getting blue jumpsuits, and I asked, "Well, how come mine? How come I get a yellow one and they get a blue one?" And the guy just went, you don't worry about that. At what this point, I didn't, I didn't want to ask too many questions. I don't know what was going on. They put me in a cell by myself. And they had a little window that was, a, I don't know, maybe about five inches wide that went along the back wall. And if I stood up on the platform that they made the bed out of, you know, uh -huh. I could look out the window and see uh, one of the back roads where I could watch people drive by. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah, it was. It was. When you get in there, I ask, you do get a phone call, right? He goes, yes, you'll get a phone call in a little bit. So once I got into my cell and all that stuff, they, they did, they brought me a phone. I had parked in two-hour parking. And it says very clearly that, the, you know, overnight will be towed. And I called my house. My sister answers the phone. And I said, hey, Susie, listen to me very carefully. And immediately, I don't have time for this. I have a lot oh, of things my. to do. And, I have some and I don't, I'm not going to listen to you. And I need to go. And I said, do not hang up this phone. Listen to me very carefully and shut up. And then she knew I was serious. And I said, you have got to come up here to the electric company by the courthouse and get my car. You're going to have to come up to the jail. I've already left instructions that they were going to give you my car keys so you can get my car so they don't tow it away. And she goes, are you in jail? <laughs> what gave it away? Because I didn't tell anybody I was going to court. Because I knew I was walking in and walking out. Why do I want the grief? Sure, I understand. Next thing I know, she came up there, got the keys. And then for the next three days, she's out there hot riding my car, having, right. having a good old time. What's your complaint? <laughs> it wasn't she should have just drove it home and left it there. No, that wasn't an open invitation to go joyride my ride. But I did find out why I had a yellow jumpsuit. Why was that? It's for violence. Because they had a camera in that waiting room where you picked up the guy and slammed him down and told him you were going to kill him if he didn't I, stop. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that was part of it. I do. I do. Because they labeled me as, as a violent offender. And that's why I got my own cell. Because I was being segregated. And I was getting really weird looks, like, don't stab me kind of looks. <laughs> and I'm in here because I broke a window. The guy that held the cops off with a shotgun with a trunk full of meth, he's wearing blue. Because he, when he was arrested and processed, he behaved himself. He didn't threaten another prisoner and throw him down. Uh, yeah, I think maybe that was it. <laughs> you but didn't I'm glad think there was a camera. I didn't in have there. to have a cell with anybody else. It's kind of like being locked in your room with, with no TV. Oh, I was so bored. So anyway, on the on the third morning. Guy comes up early and he's got my clothes and he goes, "You need to change your clothes. You're going back to court." And I'm like, really? Why? And he goes, well, you probably did something else. <laughs> right? And I'm like, did I? So anyway, 
I'm going back to court. Except this time, there's no public. It's just me with a, like 12 other guys coming up from the jail. And it's a different judge. Here comes the and judge. he starts calling them off one by one. And they're all getting five years, 10 years. Oh, my. This is your fourth DDI. You're going up 15. This is manslaughter, my friend. You you know. So I'm the last one sitting there. And the judge looks at me and goes, who are you? And I went, my, my name is Matthew. Powers. Matt Powers. And the bailiff that was standing at the end of our road to keep us from going anywhere, he goes, aren't you Stevens, boy? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, yeah, yeah, you know my dad? And he goes, yeah, I know your dad. I know your Oh, my. It, it just sounds like a blessing, and then it sounds like a curse. Yeah. It was so bizarre. He goes, oh, yeah, you, I know your dad. That's so like, holy bitch. <laughs> holy, holy crap. <laughs> And he goes, you're not on my list. And basically, he just said, get him out of here. So I went back into the holding cell that I was originally off the side of the court, and I was there for about a half an hour or so. Well, what they had done is they just took me to the wrong courtroom. Oh. And that went back into the other one that was the same judge. The original judge. The original judge. This one was full of people. I stood there up in front of the judge like I was before, but I didn't say anything. I was... He just told me, go stand here, you know, the bailiff. Okay. And this time the courtroom was packed full of people. I don't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. The prosecutor stood up and said, listen, your honor, I don't know. I don't remember the exact wording, but, mm -hmm. you know, he's been there three days. It's enough. And the judge kind of went, okay, am I ever going to see you in here again? And this time I was smart. And I said, no, sir, you need to see me in here. Again. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance, motherfucker. Yeah. I get another one of these summonses. I'm just going to ignore it. <laughs> so, That'll make it go away. <laughs> so he says, go right out the doors. You pay the fine. It was like a $60 fine. And you pay the, it was like $125. It was like just shy of 200 bucks for fine in the door. You pay it today and you're on probation for such and such a time or whatever. And I said, okay. And then I started to walk out. He was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then the cops like almost jumped me. And he goes, where are you going? He goes, I said, you just told me to go out there and pay the bill. <laughs> and of course, everybody started laughing. And uh, he goes, uh, it don't work that way. They took me back into the holding cell, took me all the way back downstairs, took me back to the cell I was in. And then about three or four hours later, then they let me out the back door out of this like garage door. And I had to go and walk all the way around to the front of the building to come back in so I could pay the fine. And then when I got there, I, I saw my mother ah. <laughs> in there. And I was like, oh, crap. You know, <laughs> Such a proud moment. Yeah, it is a proud moment. And then <laughs> when I get there, she goes, Paul Ebert wants to talk to you. I knew and it. I, and, I, and I go, who's Paul Ebert? I knew it. I didn't know who he was. He goes, that's the district attorney. And I said, oh, okay. And I, she did wasn't allowed to go in there. He wanted to talk to me himself. To come to find out, Paul Ebert is Ellen's first cousin. Oh, okay. And her Ellen's father was a real highfalutin lawyer and judge in Manassas for a long time. So he comes and sits me down and he goes, you know, what, what happened? I said, man, I just I got drunk and I accidentally broke the door. It was an accident. And he goes, well, I heard you were violent and you were mouthing off of the judge. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he goes, listen, this is your first, I think he called it a mulligan or something like, you know, some kind of do-over. Sure, sure. He goes, listen, I know your father. I know, you know, Ellen's my cousin. I'll take care of it, but stay out of trouble. And I was like, yeah, that's cool with me. Okay. I'm only going to let this happen seven or eight more times. So you get in line. <laughs> uh, no, it only happened once. No, that's not true. But okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go with I that. My list. It only not happened me. once when you were a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, that's it. I'm not drinking anymore. This is getting me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I said, that's it. I'm done. I got to turn my life around because everyone I knew, that bothered me more than going to jail was the fact that I knew everybody in there. I can understand that. That that really did a number on me. I didn't, I didn't like that at all. Felt guilty by association. Yeah. And I thought, man, I'm really going in the wrong direction. Because believe me, you, you're in there for three days. You get some time to think of things. So mom wasn't saying too much, you know, and I got in the car because she was driving. Home. And of course, the, what do I, what's the first thing I say? Am I sorry I did this? Or you know, I should have told you. No. What did I say? I said, where's my car? 
<laughs> you may as well have followed that up with bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's my car? And my mother said, that's the last thing you should be worried about. <laughs> No fucking scruples at all. <laughs> yeah, just no, no feelings of guilt. I just wanted to go home, take a regular shower, and and where's my car? Clean my dishes. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> and then my car was not home when I got there because my sister was out hot rodding it. Did you have to pay any towing costs or any extra cost as uh, far as parking? No. Then boo-hoo. Because <laughs> <laughs> then when I got home, the car wasn't there. And I'm like, where's Susie? I don't know. And that's not anything you need to worry about. I would have driven that to the tip of Florida and back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then given you a bill for the gas. <laughs> oh, it did. Uh, it was returned to me empty. The, uh, the tank was empty. She's out there hot riding around with, with all her friends in my car. Just imagine how much dick she got in that three-day period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it was worth it. <laughs> My mother gave me such a look when I asked her that question. <laughs> Rightly so. What? Uh, right you, where's so. your car? <laughs> there was the unspoken bitch. There's no doubt. Where's my car, bitch? Yeah. I'm like, where's my car? Well, we weren't even out of the parking lot from the jail. I'm like, where's my car? Like, this is an everyday event. I, I, gotta, I got things to do. I got my next heist to plan. You know, and then they're like, why didn't you tell anybody? I was like, well, the cop told me I was just going to come in and pay the ticket, and I didn't want to I didn't want to hear it. I figured, yeah, I'm in and out in 20 minutes, half an hour, and it's done. Because, you know, then there was the whole thing of throwing a, while, a party while they were gone that weekend and destroying the house. Oh, Jesus. Oh, was that when you were jumping on top of the cars? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember at one point when I was standing in the living room, because we had one of those big sliding patio doors, uh -huh. that it was open. And one of my brother's friends was out there on his hands and knees on the porch puking his guts out. And then what do I see? <laughs> I see two streams of water hitting them dead in the back and laughter. And I cock my head out the And my brother and another one of his friends are pissing out the window on him. What the fuck? While he's puking on the porch. And then I think, oh, this is getting out of hand. Wow, so that's m more stories I can use against Danny. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. They, they, old old somebody, Golden Showers Powers. <laughs> Some somebody at the time had puked in my brother's room on the wall, and uh, instead of cleaning it or doing it, my brother just piled up a bunch of blankets or something in front of it and let it sit. And it was it was like hardened rock. When we finally moved out of that townhouse, <laughs> it was it was gross. Responsible. Yeah, but it smelled nice. Like the next day or day after, the late. First off, everyone hated me because I was a, just a hooligan. And two, I was playing drums in the room. So it was like cannons going off at all times, oh all the time. Oh, God. And those townhouses had, like, paper-thin walls. Sure. So the lady, the older lady that lived next door, she didn't like me to begin with. There, were, and, there wasn't uh, any concept of a practice pad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that amp goes to 11, <laughs> which is better than 10. So anyway... She comes knocking on the door one day. She goes, yeah, I have a, a question. Somebody was jumping on cars about two weeks ago. And she's like, yeah, there's damage to the roof of my car and about six or seven others. And I was just wondering if you knew anything about it. And I went, no. I was in jail. Oh. <laughs> and then like a dummy, I was like, well, I don't know. Nothing happened to my car. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, are you sure? Because those are some pretty big footprints. In the roof of my, and on the hood of my car. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I don't know anything about it. And then what she, she just went, oh, okay. I don't even know what possessed me to get up on the car to begin with. You were staggering drunk. Oh, yeah, that must have been it. And naturally <laughs> violent. <laughs> <laughs> Coverstone. I hope it's still as Coverstone. lovely as it was before. I'm sure it is. I don't know. I haven't been there in years. 
I hope 40 years hasn't diminished the pristine nature of that uh, wildlife preserve. <laughs> yeah, basically. You have had such a colorful life. I have what I call uh, good campfire stories. <laughs> for degenerates. Yeah, for degenerates. I've These done are warnings for children of all ages. You know, and I'm so thankful because my kids don't do any of this. They're, they're honor rolls, no. A-B students. They just do it on their own. They yeah. don't get in trouble. They don't do any of this crap. I'm so thankful. If they did one-eighth of the shit I did, I'd be, ter I'd be sitting there terrified every day. Here's the difference between your upbringing and their upbringing. They're girls. <laughs> yeah, it, mu it must be. Must if be. you had a son, he'd be a fucking terror. I'm almost glad I didn't have a son because what am I going to teach him except this nonsense? I don't want to <laughs> encourage that. Son, here's the key. Grow old and tired. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Shut Up on Talking with Matt Powers and Larry King Guy. Available on YouTube, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Amazon Music, and Audible.